you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, worldwide. That's right, you tell them, little buddy. You tell them, little buddy. You listen to Late Night, Late Night with Jerry Walsh Live, worldwide, a.k.a. the Batman of Chum City. And my sidekick, that's right, she from St. Louis, not Maryland. Jimmy Kim. What's up, what's up, family? Thank you for tuning in. We got a great, great show, and thank you for everybody that had tuned in to the earlier broadcast. Man, it's exciting times. We we got some new talent on board. We just had Lutz. Mac was on board with the inspirational hour. She actually had a sister on the show. Yeah, it's nice to hear siblings uh, go back and forth professionally. That's right, because I know the earlier days, it wasn't like that. <laughs> but anyway. It was a great show, and of course, you got to tune into the Renewed Mind, the Renewed Mind with Dr. Dante Duckett. Uh, powerful, powerful commentary. You have to check that out every week. It's, it's, it's like a, a very formal Bible study. Yeah, he brings it. He um, connects everything with what's happening now in the world to help you with your renewed mind. That's right. There's a lot going on out there, right? So much for us to handle. If you're in the news, you plugged in to the internet, you can't help it. <laughs> but getting bad news hitting you from all corners of the globe. That's right. We get global news. So this is too much for one human being to take on. So that's why you got to plug in the positive power. We talk about no bad news. That's right. At least we try not. <laughs> it's about the journey. That's right. The testimony. For those of you who have given up, man, just plug into one of these shows. You, you're going to be a, a, you're gonna be so inspired. Not motivated, but inspired. That's right. We like that word, inspired. All right, let's talk to Kimmy Kim. But before we bring Kimmy Kim, we like to say this show is being sponsored by my boy, my man out in North Carolina, Phil Walters. He got a brand new song out. Check him out on Spotify. Just look up Phil Walters. He's about to drop a whole lot of new music. So you got to stay plugged in to Positive Power. Check out our programming angle on Thursday starting at 10.30 a.m. with The Red Room. Shea Samuels and my journey apology and the brand new television show, the Kelly Holland show. That's right. We got some phenomenal guests. We had an opportunity to interview uh, the guys, the original band members from Tony, Tony, Tony. You guys probably never got the full story. What happened to that family? That's right. They were family and friends, homeboys, first cousins, like brothers. And they, um, they had a split. And um, of course, a lot of people didn't know what happened. But they had some really rocking music in the 90s. And I know some of you probably still playing that music at your wedding. That's right, getting everybody on the dance floor. All right, we got a great guest tonight. Her name is Leslie Bland. She's here to share everything that she does and everything she doesn't do. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Kimmy Kim? How you doing? What's going on? Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm fine. Fine. You know, trying to stay busy, you know, try to keep moving. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah, got to do that. <laughs> That's right, got to keep. But guess what, though? Of all the, all the, you know, all the years I've been going to the Newsom Awards, uh, you know, uh, actually providing them with interviews, you know, the red carpet and everything, you know, meeting all the, the uh-huh. stars from the Maryland DMV area. And then people travel pretty far uh, to come out to get their awards. He had my man, Dr. Bobby Jones, there. Dr. Bobby Jones, you know, and... Oh, wow. Uncle Drake. Every Drake but was, was there. that was amazing. Yeah. But I didn't make it. <laughs> that man was scared. There's too much pandemic going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, COVID-19. Yeah, Merlin in bad shape right now. I can't be I can't be out there. They don't have no hospital beds. Mm-mm. So I uh-huh. can't take that chance. Uh-huh. I'm with you on that, too. Yeah. Same here. That's right, man. I'm I'm just dipping the dodging, going to the gym. You know, we go late at night. You know, we go like 11 to midnight. But, uh, man. I, 11 you know, to midnight? Wow. Yeah, ain't hardly nobody yeah, there. It's like late. it's like five people there. Well, you know, I don't go to bed until like two o'clock anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, once I get started, it's hard to turn this engine off. How do you get sleep? Well, we don't get up until eight, <laughs> eight, eight thirty, something like that. Yeah. Oh let's my let's roll right into the office. <laughs> Down the steps. And I'm in the office. 
Yeah. That's how oh, we are. Amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah, you don't want to sleep too long, man. You 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 wasting you 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 um, you missing some good daylight. <laughs> I need at least eight hours. I'm sorry, I don't get my sleep. Yeah. Uh, uh-uh. I need my eight hours. I don't need no eight. If I, I, if now, I get eight, eight hours, I, I'm lazy. I can't I can't sleep all day. I feel bad so when I get eight. My body needs a minimal six. Seven. All I need is six, and I'm good to go. I don't even take naps anymore. Okay. Ever since I've been taking CMOS, I haven't been taking no naps. I'm like fully charged. Oh. Yeah, it's like, it's, and you know, I don't eat red meat or white meat or anything. I'm just strictly just seafood and um, a lot of veggies. I'm especially, um, I'm hearing that uh, bell peppers and with broccoli is like a superfood. And that's all I do. That's like, that's a fajita. Mm-hmm. You throw onions in there, you got a fajita. So I, do, I do that like every day with a little brown rice and some fish or shrimp, salmon. You know, um, I gave up tuna. <laughs> I had a bad experience. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, you told me about that tuna. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been feeling good. <laughs> now, yeah. if I do tuna, it has to be only for Panera Bread. Right, I yeah. don't trust everybody's. I know, me neither. I, I learned my Bad lesson. Tuna. Yeah, yeah, man. Ooh, that's it. But you know what? I admit though, I, I was fully cleaned out though. It was just like getting a flush. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did it naturally, by yeah, the way. I'm good to go now. Yeah. Oh but anyway, um, you ready for um, this marvelous guest, Miss Leslie Bland? You ready to to interview her? Find out what she's doing in her in yes, um, Leslie's am. world. Leslie's world. Let's yes. find out what's going on in Leslie's world. What's up, Leslie Bland, the artist? How you doing? Welcome. I am good. How are you all tonight? We are great. Phenomenal. I am great. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I am also awesome, awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing this interview. I'm going to sit back and let the ladies talk. Okay. So um, I'm right here when you got. If you guys need me, I'll, I'll be back at the end of the show. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Have a great wow. show. Wow. <laughs> See how Jerry do? He just he. You know, it's a woman thing. I'm just kidding. Yes. But how you doing, Hi. my sister? I am blessed of the Lord. I am doing good. I can't complain. I can't complain. All is well. I love that response. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to fellowship with you on Jerry Royce. And I love it. And I love it. And uh, I saw your beautiful picture. You're a beautiful woman. And then you have a book. Oh, my goodness. So we have a lot to talk about. But before we begin, can you tell the listeners... Who is Miss Leslie Bland? Leslie Bland is a woman of God. I am a woman that loves and serves the Lord. I am a transformed woman of God, a servant, an ambassador for Christ, a servant of the Lord. And the Lord has commissioned me to reconcile people back to him. He has anointed me as in Psalm 61 <clears throat> says to to uh, bind up the brokenhearted and to give them the comfort them those that mourn instead of, of joy, the oil of joy instead of mourning and praise instead of a disheartened spirit. That's who I am spiritually. Oh, I'm a wow. servant of the Lord. That's yes. beautiful. Yes. And you know what? This just tells me that you know what is the biggest and the most important task of our lives. And I thank you for reminding us that being a servant of the Lord is the highest level of achievement that you could ever uh, have because we have life eternity. And uh, my sister, I love that response. And I thank you so much for being a a servant leader, and I could just tell that uh, people come to you for advice based on your meek and mild uh, spirit, and I thank you so much for this. And uh, I was looking through your wonderful profile, and it tells me that you wrote a book. Uh, <laughs> now, you know, how, we're going to be talking about your music book. Husband, where are you? Tell me more about that. <laughs> yes, I would love to know yes. more about that. Well, my book was in me for a long time and Mm -hmm. it had been always dealing with a husband and the title of the book now is husband where are you when I first Mm -hmm. had the the vision for the book it was called are you my husband 
and I envision different men being on the book. That short men, businessmen, preacher, and this woman gazing out, which one are you? And I sort of got the idea, believe it or not, from a Dr. Seuss book called Are You My Are You My Mother? And I don't know if you remember reading that growing up. No, and it was a bird. I, you don't I remember know that Dr. Seuss. Story. Yes, that okay. was a story about a bird who fell out the nest. And she, he went on a search for his mother. He went through, through animals, through tractor trailers, all kind of objects. He had no identity and didn't know who he was. So this woman in my book, her name is Yvette. She had no Yvette. idea who she was. And I use the name Yvette because that's my alter, alter ego. And I started well, on Michelle. the book. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes, yes. She she was the troubled one. Yvette was the troubled one. And so I wrote the book in third person, and but it's dealing with my life story, some things that have happened in, in my life. And so I began to write the book after, um, as I said, it had been stirring up in me for quite some, some time, but I wanted it to have a happy ending, a fairy tale ending, a husband who was the answer to all of life's questions, who loved me unconditionally, and I was just waiting for this ending. But that ending never happened. So what did happen was, I guess about six months ago, after losing my mother and after going mm-hmm. through a divorce, Sorry I began that. to write. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It started to indwell in me. Um, and it was, it's about a young lady who was looking for love in all the wrong places. She was looking for a man who could fulfill that longing in her heart of, of acceptance. But she had a lot of issues going on. She had a lot of brokenness in her. And mm-hmm. she had rejection. It, first, she had daddy issues where she wasn't really, uh, dad didn't give her a lot of positive feedback. He didn't really love her. When she reached out for him, he was very cold. So that was the beginning of her feeling rejection, low self-esteem, a hopeless heart. Um, Through many trials and tribulations that she went through, looking for this love, for this husband, she began to, at one point, watch um, soap operas with her grandmother oh. who, who stayed with her at a young age at uh, about like five okay. years old. And she was looking at these soap operas and she saw what was going on and she was like, Oh, this looks wonderful. You know, all the intimacy and <laughs> hugging and kissing. She mm-hmm. said, that's the real key to acceptance. You know, men seem to respond to that, that kind of thing. So she began mm-hmm. doing it like in, in kindergarten, taking a nap. And she kissed the boys and to test it out to see if it was was that was what it was. So she began longing for these things, for the attention. Um, But she found out in the end, she she had gotten married and she found out in the end that only Christ, only what you do for Christ will last. And only Christ can love you Mm -hmm. unconditionally. He's your creator. It's not found in any man and it's not fair to put that much pressure on any man or woman in a relationship you have to come to the relationship as a whole person knowing that you are wonderfully and fearfully made that you are accepted in the beloved and that he loves you with an everlasting love So she went through quite a few, you know, she had been married more than um, one time. And then through all of that, the enemy kept speaking through her. You know, no man is ever going to love you. You just might as well just go ahead and die. Go ahead and commit suicide because no one's going to ever treat you right. And she survived that. But that's the job of the enemy. When you have purpose and destiny in your life, he wants you to give up. He comes to steal, kill and destroy that vision that was in Leslie and any that. 
so um, the, the, that was how the book got started. And I uh, encourage the readers, listeners to read more to find out how she was transformed, how she was, how she was changed um, in the book. There's also a glossary that gives you words and, and meanings and how to get free from it. It's a self-help book. Oh, wow. Um, mm-hmm. oh, my. So it's a self-help book. It talks about rejection, low self-esteem, hopeless heart, bitter root judgment, codependency, soul ties. And in the very back of the book, there are resources for the reader to find out about domestic violence, abuse, suicide hotline, <clears throat> mental health, and support group. Oh, wow. And, and it's mostly because God still has need of us. The ch- it's time. Yes, he does. Yes, it's he time does. For him for the church to be real. All have sinned and fallen yes. short to the glory of God. But we frustrate the grace of God by not believing the work that he did on the cross. So mm-hmm. Leslie, Yvette and Leslie had to forgive the, herself of falling Come short. On. And we don't tend because to you do know that. What? Yes. You said something that was very profound. Because I'm going to be honest, you were talking about me. I was like, okay, she must have known who I was, too. Because we were taught growing up that you look like this, and you look like this, and you talk like this, and you do whatever it takes to make them happy. But mm-hmm. that's not how God designed it. And that is mm-hmm. like a generation, a generational curse because... Unfortunately, women were devalued, and we were taught to do and say what and do whatever the husband tells us to do and do it. And so, domestic violence has always played a part, even in the Bible. And so, I like what you said <laughs> that yeah. the church must be real because this is not of God. God didn't say that we have to look this way or this way. It's all about what's inside of your heart. And my sister, you just demonstrated that uh, in order to really be ready for the husband that God has for you, you need to know who you are in the Lord. And some yes. people think that a man complete them, but it's really a complimentary. We we don't get complete through a guy or a husband or yes. your soul. Well, I don't believe in soulmates anymore. I used to because really... Is he really my soulmate? Because in heaven, we're not going to be married. So I call him my uh, my husband on earth because when I think about what you just said, it just I just got a reflection of, of, of like, wow, that, that story reminds me of myself and other women that I have, mm-hmm. you know, had the opportunity to meet. And, and you're demonstrating with your book, and I can't wait to talk about your music, um, that, you know, we are more than the outer. We are called yes. virtuous women. I love that. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. We're queens. We're queens. You know, yes. we have an awesome father that loves us and he created us. There's so much in us and we have to know our value and our worth. And yes. And when that time is right, if it comes, the path will cross and you'll know you you need to be equally yoked. There was a, a time yes. where the Lord, he will speak to you, you know, yes, he will. when Come you're on. meeting that. He spoke hey, to me. Because you just said something, another thing. He did speak to me in the midst of my dating. But mm-hmm. I was like, well, God, mm-hmm. he'll get better. But he did give me a warning <laughs> sign. So I didn't listen. <laughs> Whatever. I know, Kim. I was because the same. I... <laughs> we got a I lot of things in common. Yes, he he <laughs> gave me I... gave me scripture through some other people, and but I was like, we've been together so long. It, it'll work. It'll work, and it did not work. He said, "How can two walk together unless they be agreed? And how can light walk with darkness? And it won't work. Dark. You have a Christian oh, and a non. Don't go there." You're preaching. Okay, uh, Pastor yes. Glenn. You're, you're talking now. Light and darkness cannot associate with each other. Now, light can help the darkness, but darkness cannot handle the light. Oof, come on, girl. Oh, my sister. You're amazing. 
Yes, it's got to be. Wonderful book, where your hus- husband, where are you? Like, how was it writing it? Because you're reliving, you're reliving your uh, past and you're telling in a third person, but you know that you're talking about yourself. How was it? Was it more of a therapeutic or was it a relief or was it a honor? Because it's really an honor to sh- share your testimony with others or both or all three. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was all of those. It was healing as I was writing, and I look what God brought me from because it wasn't, I can't believe he had me do it. It wasn't always easy for me. In school, I suffered with a reading challenge and spelling challenge, and I'm like, God, you've given me a book to write, and it was just truly him, um, and it just proves to people that through God, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You know, I was laughed at. Yeah. The first one was the spelling bee. Um, I was chubby. Yeah. And so it let me look yeah. back over my life and see where he brought me from Thank to this you, day to finishing the book. And it was healing for me because he protected me when I wanted to commit suicide. Mm. He protected me then, and I was able to still be here and see my son grow up, see my granddaughter, see him go to college, all that I would have missed. And then... After I wrote the book, and then I went into a panic. I'm like, oh, God, why did you have me write all of this <laughs> and put all of this oh, out wow. there? But I know that it is for someone. I know someone is, is going through who feels ashamed that they can't yes. come to church. Because I was, I was still in church going through this love addiction and saying, God, why, why did you make me this way? Why can't you, you know, fix this for me? And we mean God, love addiction. I thought, Can we be real let me be real yes. for just a quick second. What does love addiction mean? Love addiction is looking for love to, to patch mm. up that wound that's in your heart. And I almost to the it. point where you forget your yourself and your respect mm. just for looking for that achiness uh, to be relieved. I love that. Yeah, okay. I love how you yeah. announced it, love addiction. Because I've never mm-hmm. heard of that. That is so unique because, yeah. unfortunately, women, we're taught that if we don't have a man, we're not complete. And so that love addiction mm-hmm. becomes our target, our motivation. Like, yeah. I must yeah. find a husband. Yeah. I don't want to be the only one not married. All my girls are married. All my sisters are married. I'm the only one I'm yeah. married. So, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that is you put up so... with things. Abuse. Mm-hmm. Just to have love, just to, what you think is love. There are women that are losing their minds and not really satisfied with what they have, but they'd rather have a piece of man than no man. And that's not God. I love that. Oh, we got a lot to talk about. Oh, my. I love that book. It sounds like a book I would be purchasing. I got five books I need to purchase. I would be purchasing yours as well. And so then mm-hmm. we're on to this wonderful music. Uh, the song is This Is Your Season. Wow. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And I thought mm-hmm. when Jerry sent this to me, I thought he was saying that this is my season. Then God was like, it is your season. I was like, oh, wow. You wrote that for me. Yes. I'm just kidding. So tell, tell, tell us more about this, <laughs> yes. wonderful, this music. Uh, I, love the, I love the title because um, everyone's season is not the same. And right. this is your season is personal because it's a relationship between you and God. And he's, he's about to elevate you to something else. And I would love, love to know more about it and the subnosis behind it. And how did you come with that wonderful title? It was that I knew that the pain went in. Weeping may endure mm-hmm. for a night, but joy comes in oh, the no. morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us through them all. If we just have patience, if we learn how to wait on him, if we learn how to trust his word, if we learn how to worship him and and repeat positive affirmations, your season is going to change. It's not going to be the same. It says in Isaiah 61, 7, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion and your land and everlasting joy will be yours. 
So it's going to change. It's going to be your season. You have to believe it and receive it. It's time for depression to be over. It's time, no matter what it looks like, God has a blessing for you. Despite all the trouble that you go through in your life, you see you've been sick, you have, but he has healed your body. You may feel you've lost your job, may be unemployed, but he can give you a better job than the one that you had. Yes. You may feel like you want to give up and think life's not worth, worth living, but when you look, there are people that need you. Someone needs your story. All of us have a story to tell. And our life is not just about us. It's about somebody else. Yeah. So you're still needed. Yes. God still has use of you. And that was how the song came about. And just to encourage the women, I was my coach. I had said the Lord had given me this idea to not only write the book, but put this song in it. And I'm back in the day where you would stuff it with an actual plastic CD. And my producer was like, Leslie, no, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> I, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. well, I'm going to be stuck in hundreds of CDs. Yeah, I do. So he said, Leslie, wow. I don't do that anymore. And my coach was like, Leslie, I don't think that's a good idea. It's never been done before. But I said, I know a God. There's nothing too hard for me. If he told yes. me to do it, there's a way that it can be done. Yes. So my producer put the QR code in. So it, as a gift, in the back of the book is the song to encourage the people. Yes. So there's a your song in the, behind the book? Oh, for yes, each book? Yes, inside the book. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we get QR single code. one? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So where and, can uh, people song? find this book? And the song? Yes, you can find. The book is on lulu.com. That was my publisher. It also can be found on uh, an ebook on Amazon, so on Barnes and Noble. And in the book, it'll, it, the song is on all digital platforms, um, national and international. Um, and it's on, it can be purchased on uh, Amazon. And okay. as I said, it's available. It's out there. Okay, wow. I love the fact that you... It shows to me that it's not about the money for you. It's more so you want people to be encouraged and you're demonstrating the true gospel. It's just spreading the good news gospel with your gifts that was given to you from God and you're using them wisely. And I really honor you for that. With that being said, um, what made you decide to really start writing? I know you said that after going through um, you know, your ups and downs with wanting to be married. But what was the that it that caused you to start writing? What was that it? You know, everyone has that it, like, I'm just getting tired. And you just start writing, you know. Well, <clears throat> I had started writing years before. And every time I would try to start and write it, I'd lose the book that I was writing in. The computer would okay. crash. So I, it oh, just wasn't wow. the right time. It wasn't the right time. But this time, okay. everything just was in place. Um, I had a coach through my um, church that helped me uh, get the book together. He gave me an editor who lived in London who edited the book. Oh, wow. Um, I had someone else through the church who helped me to actually produce the book to get it to the uh, printer, the publisher. It was like everybody was in place that I needed because this was all new to me. And then I just found myself writing. Um, I think I st- my goal was to finish in December, which I did. I started writing like June or July. And I started purposely writing. And it just all kind of fell in place. My editor was great. She helped me even changing some of my chapter titles. She was very, very helpful and made and thought provoking. Like I said, this is my first book and I have um, had not done it before. And she was just really, really great. I think it was, I just wanted to see people uh, be encouraged and know that you can make it. You can make it despite your challenges in life. Um, There's still greatness in you. You have different gifts. 
Um, you're a writer, you're an encourager, mm -hmm. you're a sauntress. What are what is your favorite gift? Or do you, or can you not separate them all because you have multiple gifts? <laughs> you're I I really believe you're a pastor too. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what God says. What God says, I'm available. I do oh, minister oh my at my church at, the, at a nursing home. We do have two nursing homes. I sing at the nursing home. I sing every okay. chance I get and just to encourage yeah. people, even over the phone. And um, I'm a physical therapy assistant, and I do more than just physical oh. therapy. I sing to my patients sometimes while I'm massaging them, and I oh, give wow. them um, encouraging, encouraging words. Um, so I think mostly it's, it's, um, being a psalmist and singing. I enjoy that most. That's my comfort zone. <laughs> the book is new to oh. me, but I know the Lord has and called so, me to be a, a trailblazer. So I'm, I'm, I start things. I'm a starter of things. I initiate things to make the way clear for the next person, make that path, path clear. Mm. Um, so, so so you're a true servant because that's how Jesus was. He started the he was the best servant, the best prophet, the best everything, evangelism and all that the the most importantly yes. the savior. And so with that being said, he did um allow us to come after him to become disciples, to spread the good new gospel and he was more so behind the scene. It seems like you're more behind the scene, but you can't be behind the scene. You're too beautiful. You got that nice smile. You got the inner beauty, <laughs> outer beauty. I mean, it's in, it's impossible for you be, to be behind the scene, but I, I feel that that's where your comfort zone is, correct? Yeah, yes. But it's a new yeah. season. Yeah. And uh -huh. this is a new uh -huh. for me, the podcast. So this is pulling out of me. This is pulling out oh, of me. Oh, really? So, you're yeah, natural. Exactly. You sound like you've been mm -hmm. on the radio before. <laughs> no, it's my first time. I've done some Zooms and sang and had um, some interviews, but this is my first podcast. So this is it's coming out of me. But uh, oh, wow. I usually like to push. I'm the second person, and I push other people, encourage them. But it's a new season. I'm so and honored. It's for the story to get out. Yes, yes, yes. My first one. I feel so honored because... You are a natural. I mean, right now you just be encouraging me. As I mean, it's okay for me to say I had struggles, or and it's okay for me to mm -hmm. tell the Lord, "Hey, I'm not perfect. I need to, mm -hmm. you know, continually repent and you know, mm -hmm. don't focus on that." Because you just said something that was very profound earlier that we tend to find it, it more, much more harder to forgive ourselves for the things that yeah. we have done. And you hit that right on the bullseye. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And we frustrate Christ when we don't accept his grace. There was no need for him dying because that's what he died for. Our shortcomings, our shame, our sin. It's covered under the blood and he throws it away as far as the east is from the west. But we still, you know, I want to try to remember. We want to try to work, do work to think that's our salvation. But that's not, it's in the heart. It's a heart change. It's not about being so busy and busy, busy, busy. We we are servants, but we're doing it out of a willingness not to try to gain salvation. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You cannot it's it's like when you when you know that you know you want to work, but you you're not yeah. wanting to work to be saved. You're working because you know who God is and it's like contagious to to keep it to yourself when you really sold out for him, it's hard to keep mm -hmm. it to yourselves because it's just that good. As it says mm -hmm. in the in the word, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's hard yeah. to keep it to yourself when he's that good mm -hmm. because you want people to live within their means. You know, you are a co-heir to Jesus. Do you know what that means? You can do all things through him, but you must deny yourself. And so it's amazing. I just, yeah. I just find it so hard when I see people not living um, you know, like a king and a queen, because we have a father who says that we are co heir to Jesus. <laughs> and yes. we could be like Jesus. Yes. I'm going to be like Jesus, but we could be like him. You know, it's amazing mm -hmm. to be like Jesus one day with the glorified yes. body. So I'm looking forward to that. But with that mm -hmm. being said, I could tell you're a reader and you love the word. What is your favorite book in the Bible? 
My favorite book? I'd mm-hmm. say Or do you songs. have any? I'd say the book of songs. <laughs> Yes. Oh. yes, yes. Why songs? Mm-hmm. I do because you... it's encouraging. Mm-hmm. Songs and okay. Proverbs. Yes, trust in the Lord, mm-hmm. Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all the ways. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. It's one of my favorites. Well, he do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love Proverbs too mm-hmm. because when I came back to the Lord, um, I've been in church all my life, but I re- decided to renew my relationship back in 1998. And mm-hmm. the first thing, the first book I read was Proverbs. And it is a book that you will continue on reading because you can never get enough of it. Uh, because mm-hmm. when you re- reread some of those scriptures, God gives you a new revelation. So that is a uh, confirmation that we never will ever graduate from the word of God because it's always something different that you learn from, you know, isn't that amazing about God? Like he's the, it's, this is one thing I love about the Bible. And it was um, said to a friend of mine, the Bible is the only book that the author (laughs) talks back to you. (laughs) (laughs) And the only author of the Bible is God. Yes, he, I mean, he yeah. talks back to you. Yes. He does. So, he really does. He really does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I who love the is Miss Blunt? Who are you when you're not singing and you're not writing and you're not um, doing ministry work? What, what do you like to do behind the scenes? Like, what are some of your hobbies? Mm. I love Marilyn crabs. I love to eat some steamed crabs. Okay. I love, Are you from yes, Louisiana? I love eat, yes, from Maryland, steamed crabs, zoo crabs. Uh, Maryland. Okay, 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 okay. Mm-hmm, Maryland. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love crabs. I like to eat seafood. And okay. I find my most relaxing, calming place is out by the water. So mm-hmm. right now I'm on a journey in in my state in Maryland to find places that have boardwalks and water. And I just like to sit by the water and just soak up the sun. So I like the water and I don't really go too much to the beach, but I like to be around the water. So that's really calming for me. So I do that. And I also uh, have a grand, a beautiful granddaughter that's 11 years old. And I'm spending more time with her. She's a sweetheart. And she's a, a leader, I tell her, but she, it's not your time yet, sweetie. <laughs> so just calm down. She <laughs> likes to plan things. She's a planner. You know, she's got that honestly. <laughs> she's she a got planner. that grandma. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes. So she's a sweetheart. So I spend time with her and my family. And um, it's just my brother and I now. And my brother played on my CD. He did. He's a bass player. He really loves music. Okay. But he played the bass on my song. And um, and I love to vacation. Wow. I love to travel. But you know, you know, with COVID, if things are slowing down, but I yeah. still still manage to get out and uh, do some traveling. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. That's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. As as you were writing and doing things like that, and you see, you hear that people uh, may want to start uh, a book and, you know, start really taking it seriously. What are some of your uh, recommendations would you give to a new writer as they are seeking to write a book about their life and how they can, you know, be real? Because... You know, we we are living in a time now that believers, Christians, um, children of God, we must be real with people because I'm starting to like see how the standards of the world is really decreasing, declining, and we must not allow those um, uh, current statistics to be affecting the body of Christ. And so we must continue on focusing you know, on what God has, you know, commanded us to do. So with that being said, what kind of advice would you give new writers? 
Well, I think the first thing that I would say would be to pray about it and ask God, seek his advice as to how to get started. And and because he made, when I was writing, it wasn't like uh, page one, page two. I, I, it, it was like I did the conclusion first then had oh. my um, um, table of contents. It was no real order. Uh, just I just kind of started there. For you. Um, and just listen to what he says. He'll give you a scripture. And I found it rela- relaxing for me as I, and I typed mine. Everybody is, is different. I did it on the computer just so I could see it because I didn't want to have to rewrite it again. It was easier easier to make corrections and things while on the computer or laptop if you had one. Um, it, ju- it just flows. And, and also I had music playing, just uh, mm. relaxing music, office music or whatever will you know, cause your area to be uh, quiet where you can just kind of concentrate. So I did use uh, music um, as I was writing and, you know, and, and, and give yourself at least 30 minutes, you know, give yourself a time limit, but you'll find yourself going over that time because you'll, you'll get so involved in it, in what you're doing. And, um, and he'll give it to you. That's all I can say. He gave it to me. Uh, gave give you the outline of some things that you want to want to hit on, um, and what your outcome is gonna. You want the outcome to be what it is that you want people to get from your story, from your book. But um, I'd say those are the things. You know, be in prayer and listen to what he's telling you to do, and how to do your outline. But just get started. You know what? You're never too old. I, and I'm not afraid to say I'm a senior. I'm not Well, you don't look old. like no senior. Hey, <laughs> you don't have to tell people that. You look good. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I was looking at your, your I'm picture. Just saying, like, oh, I'm saying it to say you're never too She's old. Beautiful. Don't think that my uh, exactly. time is ending and I can't write. Yeah. No, not yeah. true. <laughs> I like that. I really like that because you're saying that. God can use anybody. I'm still reminded, you know, Sarah had a baby in her 90s. So, you know, I tell people, you'll be old when you think it. Yeah. Anytime I can see a 90-year-old. Yeah. And then seeing a 90-year-old woman graduate from college. Come on. We we got this. (laughs) I'll tell you, this is right. It's never too late. Never too late. Never Never too too late. late. So how can you people can reach out it. to you if they need to be encouraged and they would like to maybe book you uh, for a book tour or a concert? How can you be contact? Yes, ma'am. I can be reached through my email. And my email address is Judah First, J-U-D-A-H First, F-I-R-S-T, the number one at verizon.net. I can also be reached through Facebook, Leslie Bland Music. I have a music page. And um, I can be reached at a cell number is 443-961-7934. I can be reached at either of those those places. I've started at um, LLC, and it's L. Bland Inspirations. And I'm thanking God as to um, where else that's going to, you know, going to entail and where else it's going to take me. Um, I do participate financially with Sumerian, Sumerian woman, which is dealing with sex trafficking. So I do. Oh, wow. Um, How was that? Them. It's really, I went to one class and it was really interesting. I mean, you would be amazed at places that this takes place in. Uh, at truck stops, um, in some uh, establishments, it's it's really I would encourage people to look into their classes that they have so that you can become more aware of uh, what's out here. So I do want to work more with. Where can you get the classes them. from? I would love to know more about that. I would never think about truck stops. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I would think about mm-hmm. like restaurants and. But I've never thought about truck stops. Where can people find that yeah. information? Sumerian 
Sumerian Woman, their website. They're in Maryland, Baltimore, okay. Maryland. Mm-hmm. The Sumerian okay. Woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they also, I was cool. wondering, did we get, did you get a chance to send your music to Jerry? This is your season because we want to play it out. <laughs> I want to oh, hear yes, it. Yes, <laughs> I did. Yes, I heard it play I, um, earlier. Yes, he has it. Jerry okay, has cool. it. I said, okay, okay. I want to, I want to, I want to hear it. So. I would yes, love to hear yes, this. Please. It's your season before we leave. But please. I just want to um, ask you one last question before I bring Jerry on. And once again, uh, Ms. Bland, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. You are a, a blessing, virtual, beautiful woman. And I just thank you so much for your meek, mild spirit, but strong conviction. Um, you have that power of a lion. You don't really have to say a lot. Your presence speaks for itself. And I just thank you Great. so much for this time. And I, I, I feel honored that this is your first one. It's like, no, I cannot tell. Yes, yes so, I'm glad that you interviewed me. You make it easy. <laughs> you make Aww. it easy. Thank you so much. I have enjoyed Life this. I thank you for That's it. It's been an honor. <laughs> and, um, one last question. Um, yes, what yes. type of legacy would you like to be leave behind? I like to ask this question because I really believe legacy is important. And I just like to know, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind when God calls you home? The legacy I would like to leave behind is never give up. Mm-hmm. Is to never give up. That you can do all things through Christ. He's the one that strengthens you. He's the one that loves you unconditionally. He loves you because he loves you because he loves you. That's a Graham Cook thing, inheritance. And that you, 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 I've accepted who I, who God has created me to be. And that I try to live a life of love to everyone to be able to forgive because that was something that I had to do, forgive the the hurts that I had and the judgments that I made. Um, and to know that Christ is the forgiver of all things that we have done, all the sins that have been committed and the shame, and to know that he loves you with unconditionally with an everlasting love. I want to, to be remembered and that I'm a, you know, that I'm his child. Mm, that's beautiful. Well, my sister, you're amazing. And I just want to thank you once again for this opportunity. But I'm going to bring on Jerry Royce, uh, Batman. But before, um, but we would love for you to pray us out. But before we ask you to pray uh, us out, a pray out, I would like to see if Jerry has any more questions because. Sister, you definitely <laughs> have so many words of encouragement. Just, um, it's just so amazing to just break bread with you. And I love your spirit. You. Praise God. Thank you. Gary. Yeah, Batman want to know how many dozen of crabs you can too. you? How many dozen of crabs can you eat? Ah, <laughs> uh, I can eat one dozen. One dozen. Oh. <laughs> how about one you, dozen. Batman? Yeah, see, I'm I'm yes, from Baltimore I'm too. Baltimore. See, I'm from Baltimore too, but I grew up on the Eastern Shore also. You know, that's where the babies oh, come from. You, yeah, yeah, fresh out the water. Was there, oh yeah, uh, no joke. Woo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, my mom would love to be in the midst of, in the midst of you guys. <laughs> I love shrimp. Yeah, I've been throwing down on some jumbo. I don't know where they've been getting the jumbo shrimp from at Weiss and the frozen food section, but them suckers have been huge. They bigger than what the restaurant's selling. You know? Wow. Oh, I saw some earlier when I went to my supermarket. I was like, I don't know about those. They look like they have steroids on them. Shrimp babies are good, man. Because went, we went to uh, two restaurants over in Foundry Row. And I was like, shucks, I, I could have made my own um, Japanese food if it was going to look like this, you know? Wow. Yeah, I was disappointed. Nice. They gave me a little nice. bowl. And my wife said, I told him, I said, um, put the top on it, because I didn't see when he was making a bowl. I said, put the top on it, because I'm going I'm to eat some of it for dinner. <laughs> but I finished that thing at lunch. Mm-hmm. It wasn't much. <laughs> oh, wow. Little baby shrimp. Yeah, they were swimming down in the bottom somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Miss Bland, for being part. I know Kelly gonna be jealous because she, because she, you know, I, I promised I was gonna get her more Baltimoreans on the show in Marylanders. So we're gonna, you have to visit yeah. Kelly now. And you know, Kelly got, you know, TV and radio. So we're gonna spoil you a little right, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna hook you up. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm done. You You're welcome. So I'm done. Um, I'm ready to hear the song. I mean, I heard it before, but I really love it. It's very nice, very nice song. We wish you the best with it. Okay. Amen. Oh yeah, Thank one last question: you. Were you, Did you yeah. make it to the the Newsome Gospel Awards yesterday to meet Dr. Bobby Jones, the Godfather of Gospel? No. Oh man! I didn't, I didn't and I missed it too. There. Yeah, I know I missed it too. I just couldn't take the chance. It's too bad out there right now. Yeah. Well. Next time we we catch up with him next time because you know he's been on our yeah, show before next. and uh, he knows you know mm-hmm. that the you know he know about the Batman he finds a lot of talent on our show him and Everett Everett's always cruising um our Facebook pages uh, to look for some serious talent you know to bring down to Nashville oh. yeah yeah that's right oh, you hear God. me you hear me right. look but the Africans know they 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 stay on here and always sending videos <laughs> yeah they're trying to get on Impact oh, wow. yeah they trying to get on this show on Impact TV and. and that's the deal. That's right. Some people have been discovered um, on this network. So anyway, um, let's listen to this song. You ready? All right. All right. I'm ready. Here we go. Yes, be blessed. I have worldwide podcast. Well, I'm not ready. Hold tight, y'all. <laughs> I had to download it, but it was so much, so much on my playlist. All right, real quick. Let me just run a quick. Matter of fact, go ahead and um, ask her one more question while I look for this song. I, I moved it a little bit. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. That, because I could have a wonderful time with my sister, Miss Bland. And once again, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. And another question. Um, yeah. Who are some of your favorite um, uh, gospel artists out there? Mm. I love Pamela Mann. Mm. Um, Good choice. Sasha Cobb. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love her. Uh, Chant Lamore, here lately, I've been living, loving him. He's a true worshiper. Chant Lamore. Oh, I like him. Mm. You like him too? Israel Newbreed from Old School. I enjoy him. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And um, let's see. yeah, they got some new stuff out too. There's a lot of new talent out mm-hmm. there. Um, you definitely got a a lot of their promoters been sending a lot of that stuff this way too. So I know um I, I know up and coming artist that was just performing on the Stellas is really really nice. And she well she was supposed to been here last year, but uh, COVID had hit us hard. It's her name Jokia J O K I. Um, I think her music is distributed oh. through uh, Dark Child Gospel Entertainment, but she has some really nice stuff. And Titus Childs, I mean, Titus Showers oh. uh, is uh, blowing up on the charts, wow. both of them. Yeah, so you got to watch out for them guys, those two. Nice. All right, well, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. All right, here we go. Well, thank you once again, Miss right. Glenn. Thank you. And, uh, I enjoy talking we'll with keep, you. We got to keep in so- touch. Yes, we will. Please do. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. This is your season, your season of harvest, your season of favor. Now you may feel, yes you may feel, like you're on your last time. And you may feel, yes you may feel, sick in your body. Or you may feel, yes you may feel, like life's not worth living. But you must 
just pick yourself up and say, uh, this is what you say. For such a time as this Be strong and courageous Go possess the land The word of God says Weeping may endure for a night But joy, but joy comes in the morning Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.